today I just wanted to clarify something I've mentioned in a few conversations, which is genetics, genetics and bodybuilding and lifting in general. And so sometimes people will say, well, why am I going to care about my genetics? I can't change it anyway. And I think that's a good mindset to have. I think that's a healthy mindset because you don't get too bogged down in something that you can't change. But I still think it's important to understand genetics when looking at people in the whole, when looking at yourself and understand the influence that that can have in this endeavor. And, you know, when it comes to sports, genetics are going to be huge. But even in, at least in sports, there is a skill component and how much you can develop that skill is going to be genetic as well. But when it comes to things like the characteristics of hypertrophy or sprint speed and power, um, those are hugely determined by genetics. And so, you know, you take somebody like Usain Bolt, obviously the most elite sprinting genetics in the world right now, and you take someone like that, you know, one year of training for him and he's going to be faster than 90 plus percent, 95 plus percent of the population easily. OK. And, you know, you take somebody like a Ronnie Coleman and within one or two years of lifting, he's going to be blowing away almost everyone in the gym. And so, you know, most people have seen something like this. This is a, a Gaussian distribution. And so you can see here this would be the mean. Almost about 68% of people are going to be within one standard deviation. About 95% are going to be within two standard deviations. And almost everybody is going to be within three standard deviations. Okay. But most people are going to fall into here. And so for those people, you can make a lot of changes to your body. You can look very impressive and you don't have to worry so much about it, but you also have to understand that there are outliers. And so a lot of times people look at studies and they'll say, oh, well, this is what's supposed to happen but there are individual people in those studies. So you have to consider that and realize that it's not just going to be whatever the mean is. Even with different types, you might say this type of training worked better than this type of training. Well, on average it did, but when you look at the individuals, there might be people if they did, you know, if they tried both within the study that responded to the one that maybe had a lower average. Okay. So you have to consider that as well. And so if somebody says, well, this method works for me and you say, well, no, this study showed that that's inferior. It's in fear on average, but it might be that that person, for instance, we know now that most people respond better to two or three times per week for a body part than one time. It's possible that somebody just responds better to one time. You can, you know, that's less likely, but it's still possible. So when you're looking at how you respond, you have to consider where you might fall on that and not get obsessed with it, but kind of realize that everybody's going to respond differently. And so, you know, back in the teenage days when I was in high school, I remember I was two years into lifting. I was about 160 pounds. I started at 130. And so I'd make pretty good progress. And people would say, well, if you're not 200 pounds within two years of lifting, you're doing something wrong. And you know, as a 16 year old kid, I was like, oh man, what am I doing wrong? And I really beat myself up for years thinking like, I'm doing something wrong. Like what's, what's the secret? What do I have to do? I remember I took a thousand dollars of my own money in high school. I worked as a waiter and I hired a coach because I just wanted the results. And lo and behold, it really didn't change that much because I had already read for years and years at that point about what to do. And that was largely what he had me do. And I already had the fundamentals. And at that point, once you're doing, I would say, you know, the 80, 20 rule, once you're doing the majority of things correctly, you're, you know, that's going to be where most of your progress comes from. And the difference between two people doing most things correctly is not going to be just because one works harder. It's largely going to be because of their genetics. And I'm not saying that you can use that as an excuse and say, well, that person's bigger than me just because he's genetics. Maybe they've been doing it longer, or maybe they're doing a lot more than you think they are. And you're kind of slacking. That's definitely possible. But once you have pretty good sleep, pretty good training, pretty good nutrition, and you're consistent, taking those from 80 or 90% good to 100% good and making it in your entire life isn't going to do that much. And I've definitely experienced that when I kind of backed off a little bit and how obsessive I was. The only thing I noticed was that I had less stress and I wasn't freaking out about every little thing. You know, when I changed from having to eat six to eight meals a day to just three or four days or three or four meals a day, no bad effects happened. I just had more of a life. <laughs> and so, um, at, the end of the day, this endeavor is great, but don't beat yourself up if your results don't compare to somebody else because genetics are such a huge factor. And I strongly believe that the superior genetics will generally win with this, even if you're doing, even if somebody with worse genetics is doing a lot more. And so let's say somebody is in the 80th percentile for muscle hypertrophy and somebody's in the 40th percentile, even if that person who's in the 40th percentile is doing everything completely correctly, I do not think that they will make even close to the progress as that person in the 80th percentile. And we all know people who 
train like morons and they eat whatever they want and they blow everyone out of the water. Um, you know, I mean, you look at the uh, the guy who just played, who was in the new Rocky movie, Creed II, uh, the guy who played the Russian, and you read about that guy's diet and he's eating cornflakes every day, he trains, but I mean, he says himself, I have amazing genetics, I can eat whatever I want and I just respond well to training. And I can appreciate the people who actually admit that and acknowledge that because unfortunately you have some people, and this is kind of how this is perpetuated, you have people who really put a lot into it but also have great genetics and they then think it's just because they worked hard which is understandable because if i look at myself you know fairly average genetics for bodybuilding and i worked i put everything into it early on if i happen to be one of those super responders and i just gain muscle like crazy i absolutely would have thought this is because i'm putting in all the work and all my friends who are smaller than me it's because they're not working as hard but the reality was what happened was I made progress about on par with my other lifting friends. And so then I realized, oh, me putting in 100% didn't really get me further than them putting in 80% or some of them putting in less than 80%. Some of the guys with better genetics who I worked out with still blew past me working out a couple days a week. And so there are some people out there who, because they have that work ethic and that's great, they cannot then step back and realize, oh, well, maybe it's actually partly my genetics. And they just think it's just because I work hard and if everybody else worked hard, they'd be as big as me. Same thing with people, you know, I mean, there's other areas of life like that too. Well, if everybody worked as hard as me, they'd be as rich as me, maybe not taking into consideration other life circumstances. And so usually you find the people who can, who actually don't try as hard, but still respond amazingly well, those are the guys that can recognize, oh, well, I'm actually not working as hard as that person, but I'm bigger than them. Those are the guys who can recognize that it's genetics. So, so lastly, you have to kind of understand that people are gonna gravitate towards what they're good at, right? If you pick up an instrument and after a year of trying, you just really still kind of suck at that instrument, you're probably not gonna stick with it very long. Um, I look at myself in high school and I tried swimming and I tried wrestling. I sucked at swimming and I really didn't like it and I stopped. I was good at wrestling and so I continued and I, I got a lot of positive feedback from it and so I continued. And so even if you just take a sample of people who have been lifting for let's say five to 10 years, if they had horrible genetics for it, they probably wouldn't still be doing it. And so even if you're just looking at that population, they're already likely going to have greater than average genetics. And this is something I was talking with Mike Israel about, you know, just when you go to a regular gym, you know, not counting like a Planet Fitness or something like that, but like, you know, a standard gym where people have been lifting for a long time, most of those people just on average are going to have better than you know general population average genetics because the people who have at the really bottom end they've probably stopped because they weren't getting positive feedback from it so you just have to consider that you know just because somebody is maybe smaller than you maybe they just haven't been doing it as long or maybe they just have terrible genetics or maybe they are slacking you know this is not to give an excuse to people really most people don't need to be hearing what i'm saying now most people actually do need to work harder you know if you're talking about the general population most people do need to work harder and they do need to get themselves in the gym and get their diet right but if you're watching this you're probably more dedicated than most people and you're probably really into fitness and so you know once people are doing the majority of things right as i mentioned there's going to be a lot of genetic factors and so just keep that in mind and don't get down on yourself if you know you've been doing this for five years and you don't have a 600 pound deadlift or you're not 200 pounds lean because not everybody can get to that and i know people want to say well if you just you know set your mind right and you work hard you'll get there i don't mean this to be a negative video i, I more want it to be looked at as don't be negative on yourself if you don't get there as long as you know that you're putting in the work and you're putting the effort and you're doing everything you can after that it's going to come down to your genetics and just try to enjoy it because doing this for 15 years it, it took a long time for me to enjoy it and to be able to step back and and not constantly compare myself and i mean i still do it at times of course i think everybody in this field kind of does for the most part but try to just look at how you are progressing over time and you know again as long as you know that you're doing things right don't get down on yourself if you're maybe not making as much progress as you wish you were conversely you know if you're one of those people who's just flying by everybody and you know you're, you might be training hard you might not be but realize that not everybody can do that and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're better or working harder than somebody else um, and try to use that in a positive way rather than maybe talking down on other people so i just thought this would clarify that because you know everybody 
genetics is often very much talked about in, in bodybuilding and powerlifting and fitness in general. So just something to consider.